this video we're talking about spectral denoise. This is my primary go-to denoise tool in RX. I don't use adaptive mode. Everything I do is using learn. Let's get started. So here's our really bad audio that we've been working on off and on through these examples. You can see here that we have some hum. When getting started with denoising, if I can get rid of some of the hum with dehum, that is my first step. What I do is we select a section, we learn it, and then we'll render it. So now we've got that removed. Let's work on the noise. This is what it sounds like. The key to a successful denoising is to find the spot that has the noise only and no other sound. So looking at the spectrogram here, any of the places where we see these, these tall orange spots or any place where we start seeing orange, those aren't good places to try and grab a noise profile to learn. Take this section right here. I'll hit learn. It will learn it. And then we have our threshold and our reduction controls. If you don't have see the individual sliders, click on this link and it will separate them out. So noisy and tonal are the two different qualities of the noise that spectral denoise gives you control over. We have noisy and tonal reduction sliders. These sliders control the desired amount of noise suppression in decibels. Spectral denoise can automatically separate noise into tonal parts, such as hum, buzz, or interference, and random parts, such as hiss. You can specify the amount of suppression for these parts separately, as in some situations it might be desirable to reduce only unpleasant buzz while leaving unobjectionable constant hiss. And note, strong suppression of noise can also degrade low-level signals, so it's recommended to only apply as much suppression as needed for reducing the noise to levels where it becomes less objectionable. Noisy and tonal, I try not to run them any higher than about 18. If I need more than that, I'll do separate passes, learning in between. Noisy refers to what we think of as noise. It's going to be your noise floor, anything that doesn't have pitch to it. Tonal are the pitched elements, so hum and buzz often have pitch. You can tell tonal noise because it will have a horizontal display in the spectrogram, whereas most normal sounds are shown vertically. We don't really have a whole lot of tonal in here because we already have dehummed it. There is a lot of trial and error trying to find the right settings. We don't want to take out all of the noise for a couple of reasons. It becomes more obvious when we go to complete silence, but also the more noise reduction we do, the more it impacts and leaves artifacts. That's why I recommend not going any higher than 18, maybe 20 on either of these sliders. But let's learn the profile. We'll apply these settings and see what it looks like afterwards. So that looks pretty good. We're not in complete darkness. We haven't reduced it, so we're in black. So we could probably go a little bit harder on this. But before we do, let's listen to what the noise sounds like now. That's taken the edge off quite a bit. So if we listen to the before, that has made a big difference. 
we still have a lot of energy down at the extreme low end, and we still have noise to take care of here. We will learn this section again. I'll turn down the tonal, leave noisy where it is, render that out. And I always will render out a small section before doing the entire audio file, just because there's so much trial and error. We're undoing and redoing stuff, trying to find the right settings. We don't want to wait for it to render out the entire 30, 40, 50 minute audio each time. So in waveform statistics, we're seeing that we're at about negative 83. And we've gone to complete black here, so we went a little too far. Let's bring this down to 10. So that is looking a little bit better to me. We're at negative 77, so I'm happy with that. Let's see what this sounds like this time. So all of that, that white noise, that low-level hiss is gone. Since we've figured out the settings we'll use, I'll learn this again. Set these back to about 17. We'll render out the entire file. And when this pass is done, we will adjust the settings for our second pass, learn from the new sample, process it a second time. Now that we're done, we'll drop this down to about 10, drop tonal down, render it out a second time. We'll listen to this and hear how it sounds after we've cleaned up the audio. Well, I think in Asia and really in China, what it is, a lot of this is actually comes out of COVID. Let's backtrack and hear what it sounded like before. Well, I think in Asia and really in China, what it is, a lot of this is actually comes out of COVID. So this is with one pass of noise. Well, I think in Asia and really in China, what it is, a lot of this is actually comes out of COVID. And with the second pass of denoise, it sounds like this. Well, I think in Asia and really in China, what it is, a lot of this is actually comes out of COVID. So that's pretty clean sounding audio from that. Let's look at a different example. Here's a second example of really bad audio. This is what it sounds like. Let's hear it with the speaking. It is a top three priority for boards, management teams, and the frontline worker. I see some horizontal lines on here, which tells me there's probably some hum. Let's see if the dehum module will pick that up. Render that out. And it did pick up some of this hum, especially the lower frequency stuff. We'll render this out before we start with the spectral denoise. And just like with the other example we used, this audio needs a lot of work. We'll come back to these and use a batch processor to show how much time we can save by putting together a process with which we use to prepare all of our audio. So we're not having to do a lot of this waiting for stuff to render out each time. The key to a good denoising session is to get a good clean sample where there's no other sounds. This is a good place right here. So we'll select that, learn, 
since this has so much noise, I'll probably bump these up to about 15, render it out again. We have a quality setting, so I always have it set for best. I always have the reduction curve checked. And 3.7 is my default starting point. I believe it is. Let's double check. Yes. 3.7 is my default for there. We'll render this out. That looks pretty good. Let's see what happens if we render this out a second time. Whenever you do a second pass, always relearn the, the clean audio from the first pass. So we'll bring up waveform. Our minimum RMS is negative 75, so that's what I'm aiming for. So we're good to go there. We'll learn that. Let's apply it to this section here. Let's hear how this sounds with the voice. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding. So we're still hearing some of the noise in between the words. And I'll use this as an example on how to handle that if you can't get enough of a sample. Sometimes, even if you get a good sample, it can't get everything in between the words. So we'll go in and we'll look for these spots in between. So there's a section here. And you can make multiple selections by holding down the shift key when you select. Let's find a couple other sections. Select that. Let's learn that. It will give you an error down here if you don't have a wide enough selection. And that's where making multiple choices allows you to learn the profile. So we'll learn that. Render out this. Let's see how it sounds. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of the global energy system. I don't know. So that helped get rid of some of that noise in between the words. We could also use voice denoise, which is what I tend to try first. couple other notes on making multiple samples or trying to find the remaining noise in between the words. To give an example of what I was talking about with the selection not being long enough to learn, I guess that one was long enough. Let's try this. You get an error. Noise profile is inaccurate. Learn from a selection longer than 86 milliseconds. And that's where if you shift, make more selections, you relearn. Noise profile was not captured. Selection is too narrow. Let's take a third section. Okay, now we've got a wide enough band and enough length for to capture a noise profile. The other thing is you don't have to select the entire frequency range. If you see that the noise is centered in a specific section, let's say all of the noise is in this area, you can select just that area and then make multiple selections again to get enough length, learn that. 
and when it, it offers noise profile is not captured at some frequencies complete it choose no we don't want it to select other frequencies because we only want these so you click no you learn and now we can apply it so let's backtrack now to what we were originally working on which is the second pass learn that process that spot out it's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders <clears throat> and there's this huge absence of understanding the physics of the global energy like i mentioned i'm still hearing a little bit of noise in his voice so let's do a pass of voice denoise Let's render that out on just a section. Let's see if that helps with the noise. It's one of the most fascinating ones because there's this mix of ambition from all different stakeholders. It sounds like it got a little bit more of the noise. This is one where I'm going to just call this good and move on because there are some pieces of audio where we're not going to be able to get everything cut out so it's completely gone our goal is to make it so imperceptible that the average person won't even notice that it's there some of you might not even hear the noise that i'm talking about and that's okay it does take time to really develop that critical listening. The more audio we listen to, the more we develop that listening ability, the faster we pick up on these things. So this is our introduction to spectral denoise and touching on voice denoise. I'll go into voice denoise in another module. We're nearing the end of this where we'll start putting together all of these different modules into a chain that's going to make it easier and faster for us to clean up problem audio.